Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, Peter snapshots. That's photos of Peter. You know, occasionally, almost weekly in fact, I receive an email notice and if I touch it, it will tell me what I was doing a particular day. It would bring up pictures of that day and it will have me and maybe the people I'm with, the activity that we are engaged in. It usually is a blessing to me. It helps me remember the people and it helps me remember the event. So it helps my memory in this respect. But I want us to think that we are touching the email that we just received and telling us there's a picture you want to look at of Peter, the great apostle of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So welcome to Peter Snapshots. Now each snapshot has a caption and the caption is something true about Peter at that time in his life, at that time in the events of the early church. The first snapshot, Peter, the confessor. This happened at Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus has retreated with his disciples to be alone with them for a few days to instruct them in very important matters, the fact that he was going to be going to Jerusalem in order to die. It's at this time, though, that Jesus makes inquiry rather naturally. Who do people say that I am? And the disciples begin to give them the popular opinions about Jesus. But then Jesus asks them the very important question, who do you say that I am? And you know, it's Peter who rose up. I picture him standing up and he says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus proclaimed a blessing on him and told him that you did not come to this conclusion on your own, but the father himself has shown this to you. But you know, this is not the only time Peter confessed Jesus Christ. There's another day that's on the hills in Galilee area after Jesus has fed the 5,000. And then Jesus takes a boat across the lake over to the other side. His disciples go before him and then he follows them. And he's going there because he wants to get away from all these crowds. There's thousands of people. And he comes to the other side and there's the crowd waiting for him. They've gone around on foot knowing that he's traveling. And so he greets these people again. But here he instructs them. And you find this recorded for us in in John chapter 6. And in this instruction, he begins to tell them that he is the true manna from heaven who would give his life for the salvation of people. And he says, you must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood very strong terms in which he's talking about how they must have true faith in him and receive him into the very core of their lives. But the people, they don't understand this or they don't accept this. They just reject the message and begin to walk away in droves. Thousands have come, thousands begin to leave. So that there's only a handful of people left when, when Jesus turns to his disciples and says, will you also go? And is at this point, This Simon Peter again, speaking for the 12, answers him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter, the great confessor of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Son of the living God. There's a second snapshot. It's called the boaster, Peter the boaster. Now this happened again on more than one occasion, but I want to point you to the upper room. This is the night before Jesus will be arrested and then brought before several courts and ultimately the next day condemned to die. And Jesus informs them that among them is a traitor. And early in the meal, the Passover meal, Judas leaves to do his business. But as he tells about what's going to happen with him, Peter says to him, 
Lord, where are you going? This is found in John 13, verses 36 and following. And Jesus answered him, where am I going? You cannot follow me now, but you'll follow me afterward. And Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you've denied me three times. Now, this is recorded for us in all of the gospel narratives. That was in John. Here's Luke's account where Jesus is speaking to Peter and he says to him by his given name, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you turn again, strengthen your brothers. And Peter says to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you know me. Now, in one of the other Gospels, Peter is so bold as to say to Jesus, even if the others desert you, I will not. Peter boasted. And after a proud boast, there usually comes a fall. The third snapshot, Peter, the denier. This is after the events have taken place a few hours later when the guards come from the temple while Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and his disciples are with him and three of them are very close to the spot where he's playing, praying. That's Peter and James and John. They arrest Jesus and they take him to the courtyard of the high priest. First to Caiaphas and then to Annas. Now, John, the beloved disciple, he follows the group as they take Jesus away. And Simon and Peter followed further behind John. John knew someone and he would be able to gain entrance into the courtyard. So he and Simon Peter go into the courtyard of the arid jurisdiction of allegedly the Jewish court, or possibly the Sanhedrin. And there, Simon Peter was standing and warming himself over some charcoal fire. And so the group of people around him said, said to him, you're also one of his disciples, aren't you? Aren't you one of his disciples? And he denied it, and he said, I am not. One of the servant girls, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off in the garden, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? And Peter again denied it, and he wants a rooster crow. This is recorded in John 18, 25. But here's the record, record by Luke 22. This is sort of the historian. A little later, someone came out, someone else saw him and said to him, you're also one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. And after an interval, about an hour, still another one insisted, saying, certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times, and he went out and wept bitterly. Now, all four gospel narratives record Peter's denial. There is Mark and there is Matthew. I want you to catch, catch it from all of them. Matthew 26. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. And after a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you too are one of them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. 
And Matthew records, and he went out and wept bitterly. Now keep that picture in mind. Luke says it, he went out and wept bitterly. Matthew tells us he went out and wept bitterly. Now Mark is the one that records Peter's own memoirs. And here's what Mark records that Peter himself would tell in his recounting of this event. Seeing Peter warming himself, one of the maidens looked at him and said, you also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out to the gateway, and the rooster crowed. The servant girl saw him and began again to say to bystanders, this man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you're one of them, for you're a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man of whom you speak. Now substitute your own understanding of swear words there. That's what Peter said. Peter, the denier. But remember those words that were recorded by at least two of the gospel writers? After this, when Jesus looked at him, Peter remembered what he had been said to him, and he went out and he wept bitterly. That is, he had an instant recognition and acknowledgement of the great sin he had committed, and tears of repentance began to flow down his cheeks. Now fast forward with me three days. Three days later, it's the day of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And the women have come to the tomb early in the morning so they could anoint the body. But when they arrived, they could not find the body. Instead, they've met angels who informed them, he is not here, he is risen. Go and tell his disciples, Mark 16, 7, and Peter. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before you to Galilee and there you will see him just as he told you. Here's a special message to Peter. The resurrected Lord has come back and he wants to see you. Later that day, after the two on the road to Emmaus had met the risen Lord, and he revealed himself to them. And they ran back to Jerusalem to report it to the disciples. And they found the eleven, Luke tells us, and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Now, there are no details given of this meeting with Simon, with Peter. But we know that it occurred. And we can make a very informed inference about what happened. Based on his bitter tears and repentant heart, Jesus on the day of resurrection met with this disciple and assured him of his forgiveness and his love. It's very interesting that later, about three or several days later, maybe a week or two later, Jesus appears on the seashore and the disciples have, have gone out fishing. Now, Jesus made several appearances during 40 days. We don't know how many days transpired between them. But I want you to notice what Jesus is doing. He's cooking. He's on the seashore and he's cooking breakfast. In John 18, 18, when Peter denied Jesus, he went into the courtyard where there was a charcoal fire and there he was warming himself by it. In John 21, 9, when the disciples come on shore and Peter was the first one to get there, he finds Jesus on the land and a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Charcoal fire. Peter warming himself by it, and now Jesus cooking fish that he will serve to the disciples that breakfast morn. 
I think there's a message that Jesus is giving even to Peter on that day. Because after breakfast, Jesus and Peter and John take a walk on the seashore, somewhat away from the others. And this is what transpires. And when they had finished breakfast, this is John writing, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Remember the boast that Peter had made? He said that he loved him more than all the others, and if anybody else deserted him, he would not. If anybody, everybody else may deny him, but he would not, and yet he had. Do you love me more than these? And Peter said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a third, a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. Now there's a change in the word love as he begins to use it. And on the third one, he uses the word for close friendship love. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now notice the first question was, do you love me more than these? The second was simply, do you love me? And now the third time, he said to him, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself. You, you walked wherever you wanted, but when you were old, you would stretch out your hands and another would dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. And this he said to him to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. That this is a snapshot of the forgiven, recommissioned shepherd of the people of God. You see, Peter had been designated by the Lord Jesus as the leader of the apostolic band. And though he had denied him, he had been repented, he had been forgiven, and now he is being restored and recommissioned as the shepherd of God's people. Now, I want you to fast forward. It's 50 days after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's 10 days since Jesus has ascended into heaven bodily in the presence of his disciples. And on this day, the promised Holy Spirit came. And a great crowd of people were there for the Feast of Pentecost. And after the arrival of the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the manifestation of all the speaking of languages in various dialects around by the apostles supernaturally. When the crowds have been gathered and they begin to say things about him, these, these people are drunk, etc. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Galilee and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. And Peter began to witness to the crucifixion of Jesus and its meaning, to his glorious resurrection from the dead and calling men to repentance and faith in Jesus, summoning them to confess their faith in the waters of baptism. Behold, Peter, the witness, the bold, spirit-filled witness of Christ. He's confessing Christ, but now he's a proclaimer of the Christ whom he had confessed at one time denied but did love and was now witnessing to others of him as Lord. One last snapshot. Number six. Peter, an older man, he's writing a letter to the churches of the dispersion. And these are the words he writes. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ as well as a partaker in the glory that's going to be revealed. 
shepherd the flock of God that is among you. That's the last picture. Six snapshots. What are they? Well, there's Peter, the confessor. There's Peter, the boaster. There is Peter, the denier. There is Peter, the forgiven, recommissioned shepherd. There's Peter, the bold, spirit-filled witness to the Christ. And there's Peter, the shepherd of God's people, exhorting his fellow elders to feed God's sheep. What a man, by the grace of God, who forgave him of his sin, who overpowered his weakness and made him the strong pillar of the early church. But this is not just a lesson of history. The pictures of Peter should evoke memory in you, in me. For there may have been times when we have confessed Christ, if not, we need to confess him publicly, to proclaim him, to often confess him. Maybe there have been times where we boasted about our strength as Christians, about our ability to withstand persecution and stand tall in trials. Others may fail, but will not. Boasting, but boasting of pride usually leads to a downfall in which we will be humbled. Do you know Peter, the denier? Because you can deny Christ, you see. As a follower, you can deny him. You can deny him by keeping silent and not confessing him when you have opportunities. You can keep silent around others so that they don't know you're a Christian because you're ashamed of something. Denier of Christ by actions that betray him. We must be aware that we too can sin like a Peter. But we should never forget the great love of Christ for repentant disciples who come to him and simply say, Lord, I've sinned. Forgive me. Restore me. And there's Jesus on the seashore. Maybe with you, even now as I speak, saying, my child, do you love me? And feed my sheep. Live for Christ boldly in the power of the Spirit. But remember that his love conquers all. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights, with Peter Snapshots, Pictures of Us.